You know what? I've been around for a while. I've traveled the world, met some interesting people, done some crazy things. So you might just think there's not much that could take me by surprise. You'd be wrong. The world is full of stories and science and things that amaze and confound me every single day. Incredible mysteries that keep me awake at night. Some I can answer. Others just defy logic. Can people move from the present into the past or future? Eyewitnesses report a woman materializing from thin air. Could she be a time traveler? An ancient stone structure suggests the incredible. Did ancient pagan worshippers practice human sacrifice in New Hampshire? Plants seem to possess strange powers, allowing them to detect human thought. Are they sentient beings with dark intent? Yep. <laughs> it's a weird world. And I love it. One minute. I'm sorry, I just... Uh, I couldn't put this book down, The Time Machine, written in 1895 by H.G. Wells. With this one book, a hot new science fiction genre was born, The Time Travel Story. Now, of course, there are endless books, and films, and TV shows on the subject, and the mind-boggling paradoxes of journeying across time. Great stuff. Shame the concept of time travel is just fiction, isn't it? Isn't it? On July 15, 2006, famed science fiction author Whitley Strieber, best known for his books The Hunger and Communion, was out at the theater with his wife Anne and her friend Starfire Tor. Little did they know what would happen that night would rival anything found in Whitley's books. Nothing seems impossible to me anymore. I haven't talked about it very much. After dinner, Anne and her friend went into what they thought was an empty ladies' room. Well, it's a very small room, about uh, 10 by 12. There was nobody in that room except for Ann Streber and myself. So I was standing on these steps. No one went in it after the two of them went in it. And I was watching the entire time. Ann was a little bit before me, and she left and said she would wait for me outside. So I went outside, stood in front of the door, waiting for Starfire. As I slightly rounded the corner, coming out of the stall, a woman just materialized. Whoa! She didn't seem to understand where she was. She seemed confused. And then she just left the room. While I was standing there, a woman came out. I go out the door to the ladies' room, and Ann Streber rushes up to me, very, very excited. She says, a lady came out, but she didn't go in. A lady came out, but she didn't go in. This was pretty amazing because we knew no one was in there when we went in. So how could someone have come out who was never in there in the first place? No one, absolutely no one, went in that bathroom. Who was this mysterious woman? And how could she have appeared from nowhere? For the eyewitnesses, this is no ghost story. For them, the answer is much weirder. Something altered the timelines. We were brought together like a bad edit of a film, and that's how we almost collided. Right. Two women go into an empty bathroom and three women come out. Is it really possible this mystery woman slipped through from another time? Is that weird or what? I say that's the weirdest weird or what yet. Yeah, it's pretty far out, but remarkably, time travel may indeed be possible. And proof could soon be found in a 17-mile tunnel deep underground at the border of France and Switzerland. This is the Large Hadron Collider, a 17-mile-long tunnel designed to smash atoms together in an attempt to recreate conditions that last existed just before the Big Bang, when the universe was less than a 
trillionth of a second old. Scientists at the LHC are trying to understand what happened in that critical moment to make our universe what it is. By solving this, they hope to shed light on some of the most fundamental unanswered questions in physics. With the Large Hadron Collider, perhaps one day we'll be able to answer these cosmic questions. What happened before the Big Bang? Is it possible to go through a black hole? Can you bend time into a pretzel? We're now entering the cusp, the cusp of human progress. A hundred years ago, think how primitive we are. A hundred years from now, think of how advanced computers, artificial intelligence will be. Right now, we're at the most interesting point in human history, the cusp, when we're going to walk it through the universe. A complete understanding of how the entire universe is really constructed might enable future physicists to find a way to manipulate the fabric of space-time itself and travel into the past or future. But can we really manipulate time? To find out, we first need to investigate time itself. Isaac Newton imagined time as an arrow always traveling straight forward in one direction. But then Albert Einstein came along and said that time is more like a river that can meander, flow at different speeds, and even eddy back upon itself. Now we look at a river and we think of the, the spot on the river where we are is something like the present moment. And then upstream from us is the future. This is coming towards us. It's relentless. It's sort of inevitable. In a moment, what was up there is going to be here. And downstream from us, we can think of as the past. So these are events that have already happened. So there you have it. You've got the future. You've got the present moment. You've got the past. Is it possible? to go against the flow of time into the future or move even further downstream into the past? Going back in time is simple, theoretically. All we need to do is beat light to its destination, travel faster than light speed. How fast is that? Well, as Albert Einstein figured out, light travels at a fixed and constant speed throughout the universe of 186,000 miles per second. And the space shuttle can travel around 5 miles per second, so we have a bit of a problem. But our hopes of meeting our ancestors aren't over yet. Modern physicists have built on Einstein's theories and discovered that although we may not be able to beat light in a head-to-head -head race, we might be able to cheat and take a shortcut. Going back in time is simple, theoretically. To do this, a time traveler would need to bend the fabric of space, connecting two distant points to create a theoretical tunnel through space and time known as a wormhole. There are two parallel universes. Perhaps it might be possible to build a gateway between these universes, a wormhole, a shortcut, like the looking glass of Alice. Think of Alice in Wonderland. She had a looking glass and she put her hand through it and her hand went to the other side of forever. That is a wormhole. But could we manipulate the very fabric of time and space? If we have something called negative matter or negative energy, it might be possible to build a gateway to another universe, a gateway to another point in space or time. Now, of course, in science fiction, we have the dilithium crystals of Star Trek. People talk about spice. People talk about other exotic chemicals that will open these gateways. Well, I'm a physicist. To us, it's negative matter or negative energy. Negative energy we can actually create in the laboratory. It's already been done, but only in microscopic quantities. Negative matter we've never seen before. If we can find a negative matter meteorite in outer space, just perhaps, maybe we can harness it to open a gateway to another universe. The only problem is the amount of energy required to punch a hole to the other side of the universe is impossible for us to achieve with our current technology. The trick is to assemble enough positive and negative energy in order to rip open the fabric 